welcome to this service of Evensong at St. Michael. So I'm going to welcome you if, you if you're in front of me here. And I'm also going to welcome you if you're following us online today or at some point in this coming week. You're all very, very welcome indeed. And I know we've got visitors from Eastbourne. Now we've got visitors from London Way. Any further, there you go, whether you're local or your visitors, everyone is welcome here this evening. So let's just still ourselves just for a moment as we come before the living God in worship. So we begin with a sentence of scripture. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Our first hymn this evening, I'm sure is very well known to you. We have the words in the little pew sheet that hopefully you have sight of. And we're going to sing three verses of Amazing Grace. <laughs> should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. 
saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which you ought to have done. And we have done those things which you ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter in the godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed of all our sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And believe us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. In your majesty, cry forth victoriously, in the cause of truth, humility, and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last forever. A sceptre of justice will be the sceptre of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassis. From palaces adorned with ivory, 
The music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honoured women. At your right hand is the royal bride in gold of Ophir. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honour him, for he is your lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People of wealth will seek your favour. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her. Those brought to be with her. Led in joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all <coughs> generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. Glory, Glory be to, to the, the Father, and, and to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Ghost, Ghost as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So we stand and we speak the words of the Magnificat together. And these are found on page 76. My, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty has magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for this evening's reading. And the reading is from the Song of Solomon. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is strong as death, Jealousy is fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If a man offered for love all the wealth of his house, he would be utterly despised. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, David. Please would you stand and let's say the words of the Nunc Dimittis together. <laughs> Lord, Lord, now, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according, according to, to thy, thy word. For, for my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O oh Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. Mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thy inheritance. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only Thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not Thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, from whom all heavenly desires all good counsels and all just works do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn may well be known to you. <clears throat> it is Love Divine or Love's Excelling. And we're going to sing it to Beethoven's Ode to Joy. <laughs> Jesus, our Lord. 
So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, they're very interesting readings this evening, wouldn't you agree? What is love? Now, some of you may remember Howard Jones's song of 1984. I'm showing my age here because Howard Jones asks this very question in his song. Do you remember it? What is love anyway? And he goes on to say, does anybody love anybody anyway? Thankfully, he sang a bit better than I did. And also, thankfully, not everyone has such a cynical view of love. The four aces sang, love is a many splendid thing. That was 1955. And a year later, Elvis Presley entreated one to love me tender. That's right, love me tender. Love me sweet, never let me go. And in 1961, of course, Elvis admitted, I can't help, oh, you're not less Elvis Presley fans. <laughs> oh no, I can't help falling in love, he said, of course. How about this one then? The Beatles in 1964 said, all you need is love. There you go. And the Supremes a year later said, you can't hurry, love. And who can forget the Trogs view? I know, Sue, you know the Trogs view. I know you're a Trogs fan. Love is all around me. And so the feeling grows. It's written on the wind. It's everywhere I go. Love. Now, this evening's text comes from the eighth chapter of the Song of Solomon and it focuses on love. Many believe that Solomon, the son of David, wrote the book during his reign as king of Israel between 971 and 931 years before Christ. Others believe that it was written in his honor. The book is quite literally a collection of love poems spoken alternately by a man and a woman and they systematically describe the beauty and ex excellence of the beloved. Now some say the man and the woman are Solomon and his favoured wife while others view the book as an allegory for God's love for the Israelites with whom he had made a sacred covenant. More modern interpretations view the book as a description of the covenantal love of Christ for his church. And amidst all this uncertainty regarding ownership and content, I think one thing is clear for me, this book is unique in the Bible for two reasons. Firstly, it is a single poem, although it's cut up into smaller sections. And secondly, because of the subject matter and its frank discussion of love. And the Song of Solomon's willingness to broach the topic of physical love has made many readers throughout the century and throughout history uncomfortable. So much so that Rabbi Akiba had to vigorously defend this book's inclusion in the Jewish canon, even as late as the year 90 at the Council of Jannia. 
And I, for one, being a lover of poetry and an English teacher by profession, I'm so glad that he succeeded in his defense of this book. And this evening's text sees the woman asking her beloved to set her as a seal upon his heart. And of course, a seal is some form of stamp of ownership, showing ownership or authenticating something. So this is a seal. It's quite an early one. And this would have been a family seal. And if I turn it upside down, you can see the marks on it. So the mark would have denoted, if you like, the patriarch of the family. And it doesn't just have one seal, because you, if you open it out, that would have been your elder son's seal, I would have thought. And there's more. Maybe it would have been the second son's seal. And there's even ooh, a tiny, tiny, tiny seal. Now this comes from the far east. It's a different type of seal to that which they would have had in Solomon's day. A seal would have been incredibly valuable to its owner who'd take great care to have it with him, because it was usually a him in those days, at all times. And they would keep such seals either as a bracelet, it would be a, you know, some form of tablet as a bracelet, or more usually they'd wear it as a pendant around the neck. And when it fell, it would rest just there next to the heart. So the woman, so now it makes sense, doesn't it? It would have been familiar to the woman in, you know, those days. So the woman compares herself to a seal because she wants to be as close as possible with the man she loves, as a seal would have been, worn just above his heart. And in a way, I guess she wants to stamp herself onto her lover's heart and so be secure in his love. And she goes on to compare love to death. It's a strange analogy, really. But of course, it makes sense because like death, no mere human can escape love's grasp once it has taken hold of you. And at these, this Easter tide especially, I think these words take on a life of their own in light of Jesus' sacrifice and resurrection love has quite literally become stronger than death. And the final line of the woman's statement are clear. You cannot buy love. A love like the one she describes is priceless. And such is God's love for us. And just as the woman asks her lover to claim her completely as his own, to put his stamp of ownership on her heart so she can be completely his, when we accept Christ into our lives, into our hearts, we are asking Christ to put his seal on us and to claim us as his own. The love of God is stronger than death. But with God's love, nothing can escape.
his grasp upon us and his love never gives up on us either. Nothing can separate <coughs> us from God's love, which is unconditional. And what do we have to do in return? Accept it. Accept that God loves us as we are, with our faults and our foibles and everything else that goes with our human nature. So to come back to the question, what is love? Well, God is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So may you and I accept that God loves us just as we are. May you and I be helped in the name of Christ to be instruments of God's love in this world through what we say and through what we do and through how we are with others. And may you and I, whenever we reach our heavenly home, rest in God's love, lost in wonder, love and praise eternally. Amen. Maybe if you'll now lead us in our prayers. This evening we pray for the world, the church, wherever it may be, our neighbours and ourselves. We thank you, Lord and Father, for all the good things that surround us every day. We thank you for the beauty of springtime, for sunshine and fresh green leaves and spring flowers, for bluebells and along the hedgerows, and for all the myriad creatures from the pond down in Brentor that Forest Church marvelled at yesterday. Thank you for slightly better weather, for lambs and gardens, friends and family, for summer plans, and above all, for your love. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the wider world, for all those places where love seems to come second to fear and violence. We pray especially for all those in danger this day, from bombs or advancing armies, for the powerless and those afraid for their lives. We pray for Gaza, we pray for Israel, we pray for Ukraine, we pray for all the hostages, all the starving, all of those living in a never-ending nightmare, for those in the forgotten wars in Sudan and elsewhere. And we pray for those in this country who have been the victims of violent crime especially those killed or badly injured recently. We pray for peace. We pray for justice. And we pray for governments everywhere to seek the common good of their peoples and not to selfishly care only for power for themselves. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. <laughs> we pray for those suffering through natural disasters, Floods in Kenya and South America. Drought in the Sahel. Terrible heat waves in Southeast Asia where lives and harvests are threatened. And we pray for farmers everywhere across the world that they may be able to grow the food that we all depend upon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the worldwide church for our brothers and sisters persecuted and yet standing firm against governments and hatred, 
for those house churches that must operate in secrecy, for those churches faithfully attended in the face of danger. And we thank you, Lord, that we can meet here in safety. We pray for all the churches of the Tavistock area, for Gulworthy, Tavistock, Peter and Mary Taby and Whitchurch, where congregations are meeting just as we are here. And we pray for ourselves in Brentor, here and at Christchurch, and for all those preparing for special services, and for the baptism today, and for the weddings coming soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill or anxious at home or in hospital, and for those who have asked for our prayers. Lynn, Peter and Carol, Dave, Becky, Shirley, Val, Steve, Zach, Diana, Harry, Cheryl, Archie, Kim, Nick, Felicity, Carol, Sue and Ron, Monique Thomas, Christopher, Jane, Alvin and family. We pray for all those we love who are not well or who are alone. And we pray for all those pilgrims and visitors who have come to this place and left their prayers in our prayer book. And for all those who have knelt and said prayers to you alone. And above all, Lord, we pray today for everyone in need of your unfailing love this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lastly, we pray for ourselves, for the strength to remain faithful and to do those good works which you put in our way. We thank you for our fellowship, for the love that surrounds us here, this day and always. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for our final hymn, which is to God be the glory.
on Thursday, we have our Ascension Day service here at midday, led by Hazel. So all are welcome midday on Thursday. And let's pray for good weather <laughs> in the meantime. So, a blessing. May the Father from whom every family on earth and in heaven receive its name strengthen us with his spirit in our inner being so that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith and may we be set as a seal upon his heart and the blessing of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. Shall we finish with the grace? The, the grace, grace of, of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ and, and the, the love, love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us here this evening. So I wish you a fabulous week and a safe journey back down the tour. It's a bit slippy this evening. And to our canine friends, fabulous seeing so many of you here this evening. They behaved exceptionally well. Amen. <laughs>